there's a vegetarian restaurant around the corner, you know, just around yeah, a couple of streets from here. I was completely veggie. I had a falafel. It was nice. It was okay. Did you see the news? No, on telly last night. No, just just wondered. You know, some bits in the papers. I checked in W. H. Smith's tiny. You know, but that's not what I. What? So you didn't see news at ten? No. No. Ah oh, shit. Oh well. <laughs> Two fellas over there. Can you believe they voted no? Can you believe it? No, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, well, not. No, I well, know, no, but 18. No, it was almost worse than if they kept it 21. There'd be some honesty in that. We ate you, and you know, piss off. No, at least that would have been consistent, but yeah, we'll make you slightly more equal. Yeah, well, big wow. Of course, it's, it's better, I know that, of course it is, but. Well, it's just. It was 1994. You know, Jesus. <laughs> That's what this fella said last night. You know, he said it was good. You know, that things were changing, but it just makes you... Well, I don't want to be tolerated, you know? I've got a bit of falafel in my teeth. Hey, it's impressive when you see it. You know, the House of Commons have you been? You know, it's bigger than it looks on telly. You know, I just come down on my own. You know, I wasn't planning to, I hadn't thought of it really. I, mean, I knew the vote was coming up, the reading of the bill, I've been following it, but... Well, then it was on the front page that morning that Derek Jarman had died, and, um... Yeah, well, you know, not like it was a sign or anything, I don't believe in all that, but I, I just thought... Sod it. I should go. You know, show them that we count. You know, we do exist. It does matter, the things they're talking about, so... You know, I, I mean... I'm not a big fan or anything. I just knew he was important. Jarman. I've seen his version of The Tempest. It was the first thing I saw at the Art House Cinema back home. And I never even knew they were a thing. I want to take Blue off Channel 4 a couple months back. I haven't watched it yet. That's been the best thing about sixth form is discovering things like that. And no one at my old school would ever have gone to something like that. Morons. There was this lad in my year, Darren Ardcastle, Daz, and all he'd talk about was wanking. You know, he was obsessed. It's all he went on about. You know, and if he wasn't banging on about wanking, he was punching people. You know, wanking or punching. I used to think, this is what prison must be like. You know, this is like 1984. Yeah, I couldn't wait to leave. I ran from that place. Well, metaphorically. Well, literally, they'd arranged a scrap with the comp across the field. I hated it. We were outside for hours last night, shifting around, trying to keep warm. Most people were in groups, actually. I don't know if they were friends or from, you know, Stonewall, that kind of thing. You know, and there were some banners and signs and people had candles. You know, I mean, you needed candles because of how bloody cold it was, I'm telling you. Like, flipping heck. You know, and there's a weird mix of... Excitement, because of what it was, and you know, boredom, because it took ages. And this lad looked at me a few times while I was there, and I saw him looking, caught his eye, looked back. He was... Yeah, he was lovely. I can be a bit shy. And then finally, someone come out, must have said it had been done, you know, whatever time it was, late. You know, come out of the House of Commons, I couldn't see who they were. And, and then you heard everyone starting to boo, and you think, oh, because you know, we've been there for so long, and because, well, I don't know how many people there were, but enough, you know, 200? Enough for it to feel like, you know, because I'm used to being on my own. You know, I don't know anyone else who's gay. You know, and last night, there's loads of us, and we're nice. You know, I was looking around, and I was thinking, these are nice people. And so you start to think, well, of course they'll vote the right way. You know, why wouldn't they? What would be the point in not? You start getting carried away with reason. And I know, you shouldn't do that. 
And so this bloke come out and he must have said they voted 18 and everyone started to boo because I think we could all convinced ourselves it was going to be 16, you know, it was going to be equal. So it was like a, it was like a kick in the teeth. And then we all sort of surged towards Commons, towards the doors he come out of. It just happened and, and police were there, a couple of horses, that kind of thing. And, and people are chanting and shouting and just sort of, you know, pissed off, you know. And, and there is a bit of a scuffle and I did think, you know, just for a moment, is, is this... Because well, a policeman's helmet landed at my feet. Yeah, but it was nothing really. And, and then someone shouted, let's go to Downing Street. And, and so we all marched up there and there was some shouting outside the gates for a bit. And, and then we all went up to Trafalgar Square and a group of people started sitting in the road to block the traffic. And Well, you go along with it, but I, I did feel a bit... Um, yeah, well, self-conscious, I suppose. You know, but also, like... You know, because I was pissed off too, and the police were getting a bit... You know, well, not my day, but... Well, it was late. And I think we could all tell it had run out of steam, but we were angry. You now that's the point, and... So what'd you do? So we did... That... For, you know... Ten minutes. And everyone went home. Yeah, and then you read this morning that there were scuffles between police and a minority out to cause trouble. Well, there was no minority out to cause trouble. It was so piddly. Well, there was a bit of shoving and a bit of shouting and that's all. You know, but to read the papers, the bit there is, I think it was a kind of riot. You know, that's kind of interesting, the distortion. You know, I've never been a part of something that's been reported before. We, we were all just fed up. And so I'd missed my train by this point, and this fellow, Marcus, that I'd been sitting in the road with, he asked if I wanted to go back to his, and I, and I thought, well, you know, but what do you do? I had nowhere to go, and so I did. Yeah, that's his name, Marcus. Yeah, well, of course it is, sorry. Marcus. <laughs> yeah, we went back to his, his flat, and it was, you know, I mean, it was fine. It was a bit, well, not, no, it was okay. You know, I think I'd thought, and I mean, this is stupid, I know it is, but I think I'd thought people in London, you know, London's just a place, isn't it? Like any other. But I suppose you think, London, you know, and I don't mean to sound snobby, it's not snobby, I'm not a snob. Like, my mate Sean's proper bourgeois, though, he'd have you believe he's working class because his dad, I don't know, once drained a radiator or something. You know, but I remember his face when I told him we had our tea on our laps on a Sunday watching Bullseye, so... I'm not... You know, posh. Anyway, he was asking what I did, Marcus, and I told him I was a student, and... He said he worked for the BBC, in accounts, so... That's interesting, isn't it? Kind of. Um, you know, and I'd said from the start that I just needed a place to stay until I could get a train home in the morning, and he said that was okay. I was giving off the right vibes, I think, so... Yeah, it was cool. He's a lot older than me. He's 30, but he was, um, you know, nice. He made us some toast and put the heat on, so yeah, it was fine. He had this jam that's made without any sugar. And we talked a bit. He said he'd been on a few marches and things, you know, not just gay, but other stuff. You know, pole tax and, you know, so it was interesting. We talked about last night and called them bastards and put the, how oh, was it, uh, put the world to rights. <laughs> oh, and then he said, well, at least that means you're legal now, you know, because I'm 18. Well, I mean, I'm actually 17, but I told him I was 18 because I thought 17 sounded a bit young. Oh, that's stupid, isn't it? <laughs> and I think when he said that, I thought, Right, you know, I just kind of laughed it off well, and then he said he should go to bed and he went to get some bedding for me for the sofa and well, I think he thought I was a virgin, which I'm not, but I, I mean, well, I'm, I'm not not a virgin. But when he come back in the living room with the bedding, he was stark as, and I, th I thought, 
Blimey. No, but then I thought maybe that's just what he does. No, Sean, my mate sleeps in the nude. It never occurred to me that was a thing you could do until I stopped round his. No, well, a lot hadn't occurred to me until I stopped round his. But anyway, so I was sitting down on the sofa and he dropped the duvet and pillows next to me. And the duvet didn't have a cover on it. Oh, things that go through your head. No, I thought mum would never give someone a duvet without a cover on it. But so then he was there. You know, hello boys. So I'm kind of... And then he reached his hand out and he stroked the back of my head, you know, just softly and... And that was actually quite nice. Well, that sounds pathetic, doesn't it? And I'm not an idiot, I knew what... Well, you know, cards were on the table, but... I thought... He's letting me stay over and... He's not... Well, he's quite nice, you know, looking, I mean, he's all right, he's, he's not Christian Schmidt, but... So, I put him in my mouth. And that seemed to go down well. And then a minute or two later, he stood me up and he kissed me and, and I thought, right, I've got to decide now, you know. If I'm not up for this, I've kind of got to say something now because you don't want to be rude, but... But I didn't say anything, and so he led me through into his bedroom and he said, is this all right? And genuinely, for a split second, I thought he was asking about his room and, and I did think, well, now we know what Athena does with its remaindered stock. <laughs> no, but he had my top off by that point and I felt kind of separate to it, like I was watching myself, you know, like Brecht, uh, the from Dung's effect. You know, and I was kind of talking to myself, saying, is this all right? Is this okay? You know, keeping calm. You know, in my head, not... No, I think that might have put him off. <laughs> but it was just nice not to be rushed, because well, I suppose everything I've done up to now has been at parties with lads from college who... Yeah, well, you've got to sort of take advantage of the moment. I say lads, it makes it sound like there's hundreds of them. There's not. Believe me, I really just mean... You know, I just mean Jamie Flynn, I suppose. And, and Sean. We... Not, not regularly, you know, not... If he's drunk and in the right mood, and, and I kind of know how to be in the right place at the right time, but, well, it's an art more than it is a science, and you've either got one eye on the door, or worse, you've got to kind of prep yourself in case he loses the mood, or after decides it didn't happen. I don't mean nasty, but just... Yeah, so it was really the first time it felt legitimate doing anything, you know, with an accountant. <laughs> I didn't have a clue what I was doing, I'll be honest, but, well, he didn't, you know, he, he was nice, patient, you know, kept talking to me and checking I was okay, you know, I almost wished he wouldn't, I, I almost wanted him to just go for it, you know, almost, and I think, weirdly, and, and this feels weird now I come to think about it, but I think because I didn't madly fancy him, it meant I could relax a bit more, it didn't seem as important as it might have done. I could just do what he told me and weirdly that was kind of easier, I think. I mean, it wasn't easy really, but while we were doing it, I can't believe I'm telling you all this. I had a real coffee earlier, I think it's kicking in. There was a moment where I was thinking, two hours ago I was outside Parliament and they were saying I wasn't allowed to do this. And that made me laugh, and that turned him on, because I think he thought it meant I was getting into it, and, and I was getting into it, but not because, yeah, well, not just because of him. You know, I, I was thinking about all the tossers who'd opposed it, opposed me, and I was thinking, if you could fucking see me now, you know, fucking. Yeah, and that felt great. Oh, it felt great. You know, who'd have predicted I'd spend my first time thinking about Lady Olga Maitland and Sir Nicholas fucking Fairburn? I doubt anyone's ever thought about them while they're doing it before, you know, including the people they're doing it with. Now, if they do ever do it, the desiccated twats. You know, I mean, I wasn't dwelling on them, I'm not a pervert, but it did give it a... Well, a freeze on. <clears throat> I've never said freeze on before. I've only ever seen it written down. That's one of those words, you know, like... Hyperbole. 
And then after he turned the light off and he fell, held me while he fell asleep and all I could think was I hope mum and dad weren't watching the TV news because well, at one point when we searched towards the doors of the commons you know, that's when I'd seen the cameras. They had these big lights on the top of them, the cameras, and all that spotlights, because it was dark, obviously. And I'd been trying to stay behind this big bloke in front of me so I wouldn't be seen, but he moved out of the way just at the same moment that one of them swung round and I know it got me full in the face. And if that's been on the news at 10, I'm dead. So that's why I wondered if you'd seen it. Well, I'll find out later today, you know, when I get back. I mean, I was thinking about him as well, you know, Marcus. I was thinking he could get in trouble for this, but... Yeah, well, then I thought, yeah, but who's going to say anything? You know what I mean? Who is? Who really cares? <laughs> Quite dry, aren't they, falafels? My friend Elisa, she's a vegetarian. I mean, not just a vegetarian, she is quite fussy as well, you know, fries everything in water. She's got this, uh, futon, no, tofu instead of chicken. Yeah, have you tried it? You know, I had some once. I wouldn't go mad. No, it's not really a substitute. He's got his hand on his leg now. All those two blokes. It's nice to see. You know, Nottingham, there's nothing. Gatsby's, MGM the first Monday of every month. You know, but here, well, it's not lunchtime yet. <laughs> My two hopes are that there won't be much coverage of it. You know, that's a good bet. You know, that it won't be on at all. Or that they'll only show one or two seconds, so I'll be really unlucky if I'm on it. Or oh, that mum and dad weren't watching last night. Or oh, that they were watching and I was on it, but they didn't see me because they won't be looking for me. They won't be expecting me to be on it. I think I stayed around Sean's last night. I'm kind of looking forward to telling them about it. Sean. I think I'll feel a bit better around him now. It was good fun. That's funny, isn't it? Because if they'd said yes, yeah, if they'd made it 16, then I'd have gone straight home. Mm -hmm.